Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, Mr. Secretary, it's good to have you here today. Thank you for coming to discuss VA's fiscal year 25 and 26 uh, budget request. The budget request of $369.2 billion in fiscal year 2020-25 for the Department of Veterans Affairs, including medical care collections, the transformation fund, the toxic exposure funds, representing a 9.8% increase over the fiscal year 24 enacted levels. This includes $129.1 billion in discretionary funds, a 5.7 billion or 4.2% decrease from 50, fiscal year 2024. The request includes $235 billion in mandatory funds, a 41.8 billion or 21.6% increase over fiscal year 2024. Within this amount of $24.5 billion in the TEF, $4.2 billion increase over fiscal year 2024. The budget also requests a total of $131.5 billion in medical care advance appropriations for fiscal year 2026, $118.9 billion more than the fiscal year 2025 advance appropriation, and $22.8 billion in advance for the TEF. Finally, the request includes $222 billion in advance uh, funding for veterans' benefits. Mr. Secretary, I think we could agree that the budget request can reasonably be characterized as tight, and that's not your fault. It's just the circumstances that we're in. In my more than 20 years working on veterans' issues in both the House and the Senate, I can't recall a single year when the budget request for veterans' health care went down. I recognize that VA has more funding streams than ever before, including the TEF, but nevertheless, this request stands as an outlier. In recent years, I've asked you about the amount of risk VA takes in crafting its community care request, but this year I will want to know more about the level of risk VA is taking across its whole enterprise. In your testimony, you refer to fiscal year 2025 planned obligations, which will grow by more than 5%, even though the base request is lower than last year. I want to hear from you about what risk this may open the VA up to. I understand that this is not about you. This, again, we're just in a situation where, where uh, money's tight. The PACT Act has certainly been a dramatic change for veterans, and I also think VA has a very good story to tell about its implementation, the new veterans enrolling, and the number of PACT Act-related claims received and processed. Again, I know that you and your staff throughout the VA have worked so hard to make that a success. It also gave VA new tools to recruit and retain its workforce, and I look forward to hearing about your plans to ensure you have the right people in the right places to take care of our veterans. I also want to note that it's been a little more than a year since you announced the reset of the electronic medical records program. As this reset continues, I hope to hear more about the timeline to bring the deployed sites up to standard when we can expect deployments to resume. DOD stumbled out of the gate in its efforts, but after a pause, it successfully completed deployments through the country and abroad. I hope the VA has learned from that and uh, will be able to get this program moving forward again soon. With well more than $11 billion of taxpayer money invested, it's time to start seeing a return. In addition to updates on those big picture items, we also look forward to hearing details about the Department's request for mental health services, including efforts to prevent veteran suicide, initiatives to prevent veterans' homelessness, resources dedicated to care for women veterans, and efforts to improve care for our rural veterans. We look forward to discussing these other issues, uh, and again, very much appreciate you being here. 